Me, no, not me. So, so here we go. It's going to be a Pioneers possession to get things started here. Bowls in a man-to-man. -man. And a quick steal by Rondo Segu. And he will cross over and reverse layup the first points of the night. Now that uh, nice takeaway there, blocking the pass, this pressure. That's the part about coming out with a, a, a quick start. That defensive pressure the Bulls are putting on. Eddie Fleur running the point there. He'll be one of the key distributors for the Pioneers. There's the big guy, Singh Jawar, and driving right to the rim is their leading scorer, Shafan Sh Sharan Shafino, who cannot hit. Had a great opportunity. Got to make the layup there. They went a long way in that pick and roll. And Point Park also going man to man. Good ball movement here by the Bulls. Jonathan Williams is deadly when you get him down the lane. Averaging 19 a game. Number two in the MAC in scoring. Jonathan Williams, first two of the night. Well, that's just a, that's a tough matchup for anybody. They guard Jonathan Williams one on one. This is Jesse Calloway. They're going to get it into the big guy, the big seven footer. They do. Sing Jawar. He'll kick it back out to Floor. Floor goes around. Stogman has it blocked. Tip and regained by Josh Mbala. Mbala leads the break. Sagu back pass. Jonathan, three, got it. State, Robert Morris, Youngstown State, and Stony Brook, all NCAA Division I opponents. And as I mentioned, they will hop on the bus, drive to Ohio, and play Kent State tomorrow night. Jordan Stowe will put the three-pointer up no good. And a rebound for Imbala coming off his career high. 29-point performance in the win over Illinois State. This is the Bulls' first game since they split their two games down in Cancun, Mexico. And a blow by for Imbala for his first two of the night. Yeah, just too quick uh, for Scott there. And that's a quick move by Callaway. Cannot finish. The big guy, Adam Scott, keeps it alive with an offensive board. Howell. Kicks it back out. Stowe gets Mbala up in the air, and he finishes. I wanted to see Scott finish that, though. The old-fashioned back him down, Paul. Don't see that very much <laughs> no. anymore, do we? That was the bucket for Jordan Stowe, the junior from Harrisburg, PA. Oh, Mbala thought about the three. Instead, he'll drive baseline, go right around oh. the defender, and a pretty reverse layup. Yeah, Scott's going to have to uh, give him room if he's going to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. I... And I mentioned multiple teams. They've gone man-to-man -man here. They have not shown the Bulls a different look yet. And the Bulls also man-to-man. -man. That's part of the pressure. Forced turnovers and that quick start in the pace here. Loose ball regained momentarily by Point Park. Get it out to Stowe. He rims out a three. They're a decent little three-point shooting team. That's something that was emphasized in the scouting report for the Bulls. But... Point Park has yet to hit one, 0 for 2, and Josh Mbala will draw the first foul of the night, and it will go on Jordan Stowe. Michael Griffith, Kevin O'Connell, and Keith Lewis are officials here tonight. That was a nice crossover dribble by Mbala. Uh, it just sh you know, shows the improvement he's made over his career in the ball handling category. And, you know, 29 points, uh, a great performance for... Impala yeah, it, last time out. Very impressive. Um, as we mentioned, that eclipsed his previous career high that he set at Syracuse last year. And, you know, that, that was, again, you know, they lost against Stephen F. Austin and then came back uh, to beat Illinois State down in, in Cancun in the Cancun Chunk. That's Stephen F. Austin team, though. That's a, that's a, NC, that's a quality team. Yes, it they is. They lost to. That's no, you don't look at that and say, well, they lost to Stephen F. Austin. That's a great team. Uh, they gave him everything they could handle. Slow start, though. Kind of doomed them in there. Yep. And had a chance, too, at the end. Two slow start, fought their way back, wound up losing by two in that game. That was their first game down in Cancun. Then the next night, they get the win over Illinois State. So, overall, in the Cancun Challenge, two wins and one loss for the Bulls. Remember, they played one game here against Ryder, technically part of the tournament. It's an early 10-point lead for the Bulls here. And that's a nice move to the hoop, but no finish for Kyle Carrington. And it triggers the Buffalo fast break. Well, look, look how many uh, close range shots the Pioneers have, but they, they've rushed them because they're concerned about blocks and the athleticism. And we get a, a foul here. It's Holding. gonna go on Shafino. And that's exactly it, Kevin. Uh, 
as you look at the Josh Mbala play as he drives to that's just so athletic for such a big guy and another two up and in for Josh. Your point is right. It, there has to be a little bit of thinking of, oh my, I can't shoot the same way I normally shoot because these guys are bigger and they're going to block my shot. And sometimes you're better off just doing what you do. Absolutely. Play your game. And that's going to be... They're getting to the rim, that one three point of the rest of the So after that initial burst there by Buffalo, maybe Point Park will calm down, and that looked like it might have been the moment to do it, but a travel is called instead on Kyle Carrington. You know, they played enough Division I opponents, you wouldn't think there's a whole lot of nerves, or I mean, they played in equal-sized arena, so I wouldn't think there's a whole lot of nerves going on here for, for the guys from Pittsburgh. No, no, but you, you, you get into the play and, you know, there's a competitive pressure. Feed inside to the lane for Mbala, who draws the foul. See, there goes to your perfect shooting percentage because you had to mention it. But it yeah, came out well, of foul. always blame the announcer. Uh, Maceo Jack, and you'll see, a, a, you know, much of that from Jack. You know, he's a, a spot-up three-point shooter, but uh, a nice pass there to Mbala. So Josh, the senior from Bordeaux, France, via some time in his childhood spent in Detroit. Hits the first free throw. Eight of those 15 points belong to Josh and Bala. Coming into this game, averaging 8.4 rebounds per game. That's already up to number two in the MAC. Preseason, first team all Mid-American Conference before we got this season going, and certainly well deserved by him. Well, and, and, and to me, he is an example of uh, practice and putting the work in and becoming the offensive threat that he is. He came in as a, a, a defender and rebounder and there was some offensive ability. It wasn't like there was none, but he's really uh, come into be a, a huge threat. A couple substitutions in the ball game for Buffalo. Curtis Jones and Keyshawn Bruton check in. That ball went out of bounds off of the Bulls. So it will stay with the Pioneers. Haven't gotten, uh, and he's not actually in the ball game right now under the big guy from India yet. Well, they went with a smaller lineup, Paul, I think, to uh, get more three-point attempts here, try to close the gap. I mean, listen, Point Park's got things to work on, too, for their sure. division play. So. And they've brought in a kid in Mahali Spanos who's shooting 55% from beyond the arc this year. And there he is right there, number 33. He'll dish it off, and that layup goes up and in for Kyle Carrington. Very nice move for Carrington. Had that one earlier when he got called for the travel, but uh, pulled it off there. Very nice drive to the bucket. Trayvon Fagan in the ballgame for Buffalo as well. Zone defense here by Point Park. Different look for the first time. Kick it off to Fagan. Rims out the three. Eddie Floor brings it into the front court. And notice they, they push the pace off the miss there, Paul. They're not afraid to, you know, the smaller line and play a quicker pace of basketball. You might think differently while well, they want to slow it down, limit opportunities. No, they, they want to get more chances. Now they go back to man-to-man -to -man defense. And that's going to be a foul on the Bulls. Keyshawn Bruton going to get called for that one. If he swung the elbow there a little bit, or he's uh, he's getting an explanation right now. Yep, yeah, and I think you, you might have seen right at midcourt, <laughs> Keith Lewis, our official, it, kind of gesturing to what happened there. Yeah, fighting through the screen there, and there you go. And, and that's a great interaction that perhaps uh, is not uh, emphasized enough. Is the officials hey, we'll explain this is what you did wrong. Um, and why I called the foul. Yeah, and good for them for doing it. Maybe this is the kind of game where they're a little more willing to do that. Well, the other thing is, you know, the, the officials are out here once. They're interacting with the players, getting to know them. And, um, you know, it, Bruton kindly asked, what was the foul? What did I do? It wasn't a complaint like, oh, what do you call that for? It was, hey, can you tell me what I did wrong so I can understand. And you can see the early turnover count going on right now. Four of them early for Point Park. And then that's going to be a foul drawn again by Mbala. Called on Carrington. Now the big fellow comes back in, Singh Jawar. From India, which yeah, you mentioned in the open, he is the only Division I player in America, or excuse me, a college basketball player in America from India playing right now. 
Because we have another offensive yep, foul here. Is that what's going to be on? It is on Maceo Jack on the drive to the hoop. It's a really interesting story. It, it's, it's a fascinating story because when you think of this 1.2 billion people in the country of India, that's three, over three times the United States. Quick three goes off the side of the rim by Shafino. Fast break for the Bulls. Bruton tried to lead Trayvon Fagan with the pass that did not connect. So the evolution of that story is the NBA has set up NBA academies in a number of international countries to grow the game. And they have set one up in India, and he is a graduate of that academy. About 20 kids every year go into that academy where they get coaching and sort of try to develop the skills. And there he is holding the ball right there, and he throws it away, stolen by Curtis Jones. And that's how he was discovered, it, through that NBA academy. He played soccer before, he got introduced to basketball. Look at Mbala just muscle that ball over the top of the head of the defender and then follow up with the bucket and the three-point play opportunity. As Carrington, there's the uh, takeaway on the, on the pass that got jumped by Jones. Nicely done there. And then what you're going to see is the uh, rebound comes to Mbala and gets fouled from the floor. Yeah, yeah. well, Carrington just sort of throw his arms up in the air. He was already down, and that's what the foul call is comes from. And you can see an early 11 points for Josh Mbala. Well, these aren't... Uh, one thing I, I, I like what uh, Jim Weitzel uh, had done initially with the substitutions is... It, and he has it now because he's got Jonathan Williams out there. It's not just, okay, I'm putting all the reserves in. Uh, he's spotting them, and now you got four reserves right out there right now uh, with Jonathan Williams. Like so, because uh, there might be opportunities in the season, or times where hey, they're going to have to play you know, with the starting players. Yeah, and it's an opportunity for those guys to be out there with the quality players and test their game. And how about Adam Scott testing out the three-point line and hitting the triple? Uh, I like what Cole Hartnett said something to him. <laughs> the Madonna Scott gave him a big smile, so I'm glad to see He said, you look a little like someone, don't you? <laughs> Keyshawn Bruton, fall away three, no good. That goes I off think uh, LaCool Hardnett usually has probably a funny comment for almost everybody he plays against. He's that kind of a kid with a great personality and a terrific smile always. Uh, they're having a discussion still. It's like uh, they're on first base in a baseball game. <laughs> <laughs> LaQuil might be going, man, you're a big dude. How come you're not playing in tight end in the NFL somewhere? Well, the Steelers might be looking over all things after yesterday. And that's going to be the two of them colliding there. Uh, and then Scott's going to get called for the foul. Yeah, offensive Six, foul. 6'7", 245 is Adam Scott from East Cleveland, Ohio. Spent a little time at Division I Cleveland State. Yeah, he's, uh, I, wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to run to a pick by him. He is a solidly built man. Hard net. Fagan had it knocked away on the drive and stolen away into the hands of Scott. And turned on back over. And there's your rim rocker for Curtis Jones. Yeah, the cross court. You can't get away with a cross court pass like that. Head and shoulder fake. Up and in by Nate Van. And now we're running on both ends here for his country. Well, perhaps uh, we have you know some young fans in India watching this game tonight and are inspired by him. So that's uh, it's got to start somewhere. We're, sure. we're we're told we have been approved to call him Jags. That's what they call him here at Point Park. So we're good with going Jags for the rest of the route. Here's a steal by Jonathan Williams into the corner. Keyshawn Bruton short on the three. Look at Laquil Hardnett pull the rebound down and put it up and in. Uh, you know, I mentioned before that timeout, uh, Coach Jim Weitzel did not look pleased, and I, I, I think he didn't like some of the sloppy play. Bulls had four turnovers uh, going into that timeout. They had four seven, but I think he wanted things a little more tightened up. Long three by Whoa. Eddie Floor. The floor general pops in the three, the junior from Pittsburgh. And and man-to-man -man defense, he's matched up against LaCour Hartman. He's given up about half a foot. Now they've switched. 
And back to Jones. Jonathan Williams, little stutter step move. Head, shoulder, fake, layup good. Seven for the senior from Rochester, Jonathan Williams. I mean, just, there's so many tough matchups right now on the floor for Point Park defensively. Guarding man-to-man. -man. Bulls have stayed predominantly man-to-man -man defense here, Paul. Nate Van trying to go up against Jonathan and does. Nicely done by Nate Van, the sophomore from Las Vegas. That was an off-balance shot. Got it to go down. Williams open for three. Rims it out. Offensive board, another one for Hardnett, and another putback. I think on that, that bucket by Van last time, I thought he stepped on Jonathan's foot, because I've seen him wincing a few times, and kind of came down awkward off that three and fell backwards. That's something to keep an eye on there. I'm Paul Peck with Kevin Sylvester. We're here at UB's Alumni Arena. Non-conference basketball between the Bulls and the Point Park Pioneers. The windscreens are getting a workout here tonight, aren't they? Well, I, I, I thought it was fitting that Paul Peck calls Point Park <laughs> Pioneers, which, by the way, their mascot is a bison. Interesting. And the name of the mascot is Black Diamond 2. Okay. Point Park Pioneers. You know, I, I'm, uh, I, I think I've got a new team I'm going to root for. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we follow the Bulls, and I'm a Syracuse grad, but how could I not root for the only team in the country that has the same initials that I do. That is a reason if there is anyone. <laughs> you saw Williams on the drive there, and they're making things difficult for him, which does find Jordan Stowe there with the physical foul. His third of the night. On Geneva. Yeah, you know, hey, but Point Park, man, it's, uh, you know, those of us that have lived our lives with those initials, uh, I feel like there's a kinship there. I was trying to think if there was another P in there for a middle name, Paul, but I, uh, you know, for the pioneer part, but that's why I think we've we got enough. There's enough, there's enough of those that are P's that are floating around here so far tonight. That was the reason for my pause. Let's see what Point Park can do with this possession. Did you see the Scott threw, he had the drop pass and just slid over and Rondo Segu feels the pick right there. And, you know, Stowe, excuse me, Floor, uh, I, I like the way this kid plays. He plays fearless. Foul was on the cool hard net, his first. Fourth team foul on the Bulls. Yeah, Eddie Floor hits that free throw, 73% on the season. And he just, he looks like a gamer, you know? Like he's, he's one of those guys that you know you're, you're going to have to play hard against him because he's going to play hard. Comes out after the make there. You get a little rest, but we'll see him again here in the first half for sure. Pittsburgh native is Eddie Floor. The campus of Point Park located right downtown, right where the triangle is, Point Park. That's, if you're familiar with Pittsburgh, but it's where all the rivers come together. The old confluence. Their campus is literally right there. They went with a little diamond press there off the make the substitution. Show the Bulls a different look. You see they, they go high-low here with Scott. Setting that high pick. Here it comes. Scott with that pick on Sagu. Trying to free up Van. Quick hands by Sagu, but he gets called for the foul. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna run that offense around this uh, high pick, and he came around the pick there, and Sagu off balance, and Van gets the foul call now. And it will send Nate Van to the free throw line. That one will fall off. A little under eight points per game average for Nate Van. You know, this game may not be where the Bulls expected it to be right now, Paul. It's at the 13-point margin, so well, it's 13 points, but... And, you know, they've substituted, but here comes that pressure again. A little diamond press there in the middle of the floor, and they drop back into man-to-man -man defense. Sagu will spot up and drain the three. Rondo Sagu averaging 21 points per game in the last two games. Both of those games down in Cancun, Mexico seem to agree with him. 
Top 10 in the MAC in scoring is Rondo Segula at a little over 16 per game. I can't have that big of a gap on the guards of Buffalo in the perimeter. Quick move to the hoop for Van, and it flies out of bounds, and that will be a turnover to the Bulls. Well, I think Van tried to sell it. You know, Point Park is a uh, performing arts school, Paul. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. <laughs> Van's taking a few action classes. So 14 points off turnovers, Point Park none. Fast breaks, 11 to nothing, Buffalo as well. Well, that's uh, you know, Buffalo's game. They forced nine turnovers from the Pioneers and have converted on those. Also dominating the paint, which we expected. No points from uh, Point Park's leading scorer, Sharon Shafino. He's in the ball game now, hasn't scored yet. That's a miss. That's a lead pass from Mbala to Jonathan Williams. Jonathan will flip it cross court for Segu. And he rims out the three. Mbala got in the way of the rebound, but Shafino brings it down. Uh, yeah, I like trying to establish a three again. Two-handed chest pass by Floor. And that leads an assist and the first bucket of the night for Shafino. That was a nice shot there, a pull-up jumper for Shafino. Comes from a, a basketball family down in Pittsburgh. That's a well-known name down in the area, Shafino. His, his uncle Drew, one of the all-time greats at West Virginia. Jonathan decides to dish it out to Mbala, who has it knocked away. And it's regained by Maceo Jack, who leans in and hits. Nice move there by Maceo to create a little space to put that up and in for his first two. Well, you know, with, with Maceo, you know, we think of him as a spot-up three-point shooter, but he's, he's got the body to play down low. He's put the work in the weight room, you can tell. High post for the big forward, Scott. And give it to the big man. And they get it to the big man. Sing Joar, he'll kick it back out. Shot clock under 10. Shafino drives left of the lane, has it knocked away and stolen by Jack. Here comes Maceo on the break for Jonathan, for Impala, for the slam, Bala. Now well, that's, uh, you know, that's transition basketball right there, running the floor to have your big man get down there for the finish. 14 points already for Josh Impala. Oh. Callaway into the lane, knocked it, had it knocked away. It will stay with the Pioneers. And Callaway tucked that away. He sure did. <laughs> like he was going for the end zone. Three points of contact there. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna punch that ball out. Yeah, you know, the one thing, yeah, you know, uh, Jag came out. Think uh, Juwar. Here's a three-point attempt, Paul. But uh, while he's in there, only had one shot attempt, and I. I think they, when he's in there, they need to take more advantage of that. I mean, he, he had a nice little jump hook there. And, you know, it's a conditioning issue. That's why when we've seen him for a little bit here, and down the floor, and here's that great finish for Mbala. Ball will stay with the Bulls. Good hustle there by Rondo Segu. Almost uh, went over the table there behind the basket. David Skogman back in the ball game. He feeds it down low for Jonathan. Kicks it back. Skogman for three. No good. Mbala, rebound, spin move, stutter step, miss. And out of bounds to the Pioneers. Well, is it, you know, this is what Skogman brings to the team from size, to have your center out there at the three-point arc. He's a good three-point shooter, and ideally they want to get him three looks a game uh, from the three-point arc. That was the first one uh, for him, so... Skogman coming off a career-high 17 points in the win over Illinois State. He had 15 of those in the first half, including a couple of threes. That's a long three by Eddie Floor that won't go. That was almost a four. <laughs> so Williams so quick <laughs> and so strong with the tomahawk dunk. Wow. He took off from out there. Chitawaga. That was awesome. Shafino has the three blocks. Scott grabs the rebound. Able to get it to his teammate. Move it back around the perimeter. Carrington trapped in the lane. Can't hit. Rebound for Skogman. Nice job by Skogman, too. You see, when the shot was going up there, he went to get the box out on the body there. Well done. Sagu misses the layup. 
No look pass by Floor to his teammate. Shafano. Kick it out to the left side. Three pointer won't go for Cochran. And another offensive board. Oh. Floor is not afraid to shoot from anywhere on the floor. <laughs> I like how he smacked the <laughs> Floor, <laughs> floor, shot, yes. Uh, you know what? Hey, if, if that's the best look he's going to get, shoot it. Well, that may be a little part of the thinking that our Nor we may have to take that step or two back in order to create space. Nice crossover move by Jonathan to a wide open Rondo Sagu. Bullseye. I mean, Floor and Scott are, they are gassed, I'll tell you that out there. And they're trying to guard them. And this is where Buffalo did a nice job. Let's, let's find the open man. Let's find the best shot available. Bunch of subs ready to come in for Point Park. Knocked away. Here comes Josh. And there. Oh, oh he missed the dunk. And the scowl on Jim Weitzel's face is evident. Scoglin with the rebound. A little too highlight worthy there maybe for Josh. Or uh, attempted. Yeah, I, I think uh, th 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 there's a three for Maceo Jack. He, he tried the spectacular. And Jim Weitzel's coaching. I, I like what Coach Weitzel's doing here. Keeping his, uh, stay engaged in this. Yes, you've, you've got a big lead here, but we got things to work on. Drive to the hoop will not go for Kyle Carrington. Lead pass for Jonathan for Sagu. Got the three in the air. It won't oh. go, but you know, more importantly for Buffalo with Mbala and Sagu and, and Jonathan in there, most of the starters, they did what should be done in this game. Uh, open it wide yep. open, which 20 they did. To, 20 to two run right now for the Bulls. And a lot of the substitutes have come into the ball game. Both of them involved in that play. Curtis Jones and Kuel Matting. And Matting wasn't looking for that pass, and it's stolen away. Jesse Callaway for the Pioneers. I don't know why Matting would have been looking for that pass. That was uh, too aggressive of a play for Jones, in my opinion. Get it back to Callaway, thinking about the three. Dishes it off to his teammate Svanos. But you have two starters out there with these players. You have Jack and Skogman. Hanging and not hitting is Nate Van, rebounded by Skogman. Curtis Jones get it into the big guy in the low block. Skogman up, can't get it to go. Tipped away and taken away by Spanos. And that one is blocked by Curtis Jones, but recover. When someone gets in foul trouble or there's injury issues. So I think that's what we're going to see a lot of here. The final minute or so of this half and a lot in the second half is the opportunity for guys like Jones and Bruton and Perry and some of the other players that don't play quite as much to prove to the coach that they should play more. Maceo Jackane hit the three. Kuel Matting had a brief chance at that rebound, couldn't get it, and I think he may get called for the foul. No, uh, he get called traveling. Traveling. Actually, uh, occurred on that. Or do we have a foul? No, they're, they're trying to get the shot clock, I think. It was a travel violation. And Jones tried to get it into and eventually did get it into the big guy, Matting. There's Jones, long on the three. Skogman uses that reach of his to get the rebound to Keyshawn Bruton, who drains it. That was good ball movement there in recognition that a teammate was going to be open for the three. Didn't know why the shot clock did not reset, though. It was, it was called traveling. It was a possession change. Under 30 seconds to go in the first half. It has pretty much gone the way you would have expected it would with the MAC preseason favorites against an NAIA school in Point Park. Cochran looking for an opening, kicks it back to his teammate Nate Van. Cochran, long three, got it. <laughs> Luke Cochran, freshman assist versus five turnovers. They've also turned the 11 forced turnovers into a 17-0 points off turnovers advantage over Point Park. So, so at this point, a team like Buffalo doing everything it should be doing against a team like Point Park. Yeah, and Point Park going with a really small lineup here to start this second half. And I expect him to push the pace and, you know, Buffalo taking advantage of it. Let's go down to the paint. Mbala. And gets the foul. 
Yep, Shathan Walker, six foot three freshman out of Toronto, gets called for that. And as Kevin mentioned, 16 points, nine rebounds in the first half for Josh Mbala. Give him 17, coming off the career high 29 point effort against Illinois State. And, you know, he's relieved to have that rebound dunk on that missed three by Shagu. <laughs> he doesn't have to hear about it from anybody. One of two from the line for Josh Mbala. You know, Michael Jordan came and played a preseason game in Buffalo many moons ago, Paul. You may I do remember, remember the game. Yes. Do you remember what happened in the game? Uh, I don't. Uh, Jordan missed a dunk. He got stuffed by the rim. How often did that happen ever? Uh, it, never, it happened in that game, and he was embarrassed by it. <laughs> he said afterwards his legs were tired. That's what I remember from it. So you got to get the dunk to eliminate the memory of the miss. Yeah, and uh, MJ probably used that as motivation for the next two weeks. <laughs> I think it spurred him on for the six titles, frankly. That could be, too. Get it down low for Mbalo. Has it knocked away, and a good battle on the floor for the loose ball. And recovered by the Pioneers. Yeah, I love them. I love them. And let him play. Yeah, Shathon Walker right in the middle of that. And Michael Griffith, the official, he could have called a foul, could have called travels. And now, let, let's let him fight this out. Van, a little shake and bake, left and right move on Sagu, but Sagu holds his ground, does a nice job. Kick it out for the three. That is long and no good by Jordan Stowe. That was great. And heads up defense by Sagu. And Van put that little shake and bake, if you will, on there's the yeah, How about that one? <laughs> that's how you do it. Well, that's the level up, right? That's yeah. the next level, Division One. Uh, it's a little quicker, and you saw him, that jab step to create the space for that jumper. There's a shaking and baking, pulling burnt cookies out of the oven. There's shaking and baking, pulling a wedding cake out of the oven. <laughs> I thought you were going chicken, frankly. Well, uh, you know, you're, you're right. And Honestly, bake. that would have been, I was thinking bake, but but the, the is, do they still have shake and bake? Your mom used to make that for you, right? Yes, they have shake and bake. Okay, I wasn't me? sure. I, you know, may I get to get my wife to make that for me? I, I make, I make it for my... Put the chicken in the bag, and right? Yes. You know? I, I make it for my kids, along with Hamburger Helper, Paul. Oh, there you go. That Look still you. exists, too. TV dinners? Swanson's TV dinners as well? I can't find those, unfortunately. Those they don't have anymore. Not in the tin. <laughs> It's a staple of our childhood, in case you're wondering. <laughs> but you had to get the one with the brownie dessert, and that was delicious, yep. that little jump hook I there. I think Nathan Williams ate a little better when he was growing up in Rochester. <laughs> At least he looks like it. That's 16 for him. I'm going to say a nice little jump hook by Nathan. Good touch. Scott with a little turnaround on his end, and he will draw the foul. Uh, he, you know what? In their lead play... Uh, he's got he's got to be so tough to handle that. I mean, just look at the power. Skogman doing a nice job, but then leans into him, and that's where the foul came. Second foul on Skogman. And, you know, and that's the thing. When you got a big body like that, he's going to back down. They'll let you push on him a little bit, but at some point, you, you just you, you can't just hammer away because he's bigger. Scott had a nice 20-point, 11-rebound game in their last outing a little over a week ago. A one-point loss to conference rival Rio Grande in Ohio. And Scott gets his own rebound and puts gets the two points anyway. That's two points the hard way. And nice little touch there with that one-hander. Skogman no good from three. Mbala gets fouled on the elbow as he puts it back up and in. That would be rebound number 10 for Josh Mbala. That's the second three-point look for Skogman as it comes from the corner here. I will tell you, in warm-ups, uh, the shoot-around time, Skogman was lights out from the top of the key. That's his spot, if you want to pick a spot. The other spots on the floor, not so much, but I'm telling you, at least tonight. But top of the key, Paul, he was just draining. It was automatic. Yep, 5 of 11 on the season for Skogman, so still right around 50% for him. And you'll he take was a 40% three-point shooter in high school. Which is great uh, from beyond the arc. One of two free throws are good for Josh Mbala. 18 points now, 11 rebounds for the big guy. Working Scott here with power. And as he tried to back it in on Skogman, got just enough contact to lose the ball and the dribble and out of bounds to the Pioneers. 
But I like the fact, you know, Scott's in the game. They're going to him. He's got the, oh, nice move. Oh, got to finish that. Oh, yeah. Shafino had the great move but couldn't finish. But I can say, when Scott's in the game, you know, I like the fact they're going down to him. Deshaun Bruton, second three of the night. Well, you know, that's the thing the Bulls got to do, and I'm sure Jim White told the staff we're talking on a halftime. Let's, let's play our game still, fellas, here. This is, we still got things to work on and accomplish. Josh Mbala will draw the foul. Buffalo on the night, 7 of 19, three-point shooting. That is right at their season average of a good number, 37%. That puts them third in the MAC right now in three-point shooting. If they can stay in the top three in the MAC all year long with the inside game they have from Williams and Mbala, it's going to be awfully tough to beat them. Yeah, I agree. You've got to be able to, to shoot from beyond the arc. And it's been several players making them too bad. Williams, Sagu, they have Bruton making it. Skogman's going to make this. Well, all right. He was near his spot. But you got Skogman who can shoot it. Maceo Jack can shoot the three. I think he's made one earlier tonight. He has. So when you have that many players that they can shoot the three-point, uh, it, it not only uh, point coming, it opens things up down low too. So what do, you, what do you guard? If they can beat you down low and out high, it, you're in for a tough night. And I think that was one of the uh, weaknesses for this team last year was that th there wasn't a consistent three-point shooting either individually or as a, I, I believe the men just missed out. Just missed but, out, yes. But yeah, you know, so that's kind of Joe Lewandowski when he's not coaching here, is, is involved with USA Basketball, and you know, if that's an Olympic sport, he's going to have an opportunity to keep doing it at a very high level. And uh, Mbala going to the hoop here, and you talk about two big bodies colliding there, Scott steps in, and it's just positioning. You know, we had the shot, and if we get another shot of uh, Coach Lewandowski in, in a you moment you got to tell everybody who you think he looks like. Well, yeah, you, you asked at the top of the broadcast. Uh, that Imbala uh, is able to make that one here. There, there's a look. I mean, a fellow who just made some news today and is going to press conference tomorrow. Put a, put a Nike cap on him, maybe a red shirt, golf shirt. Yeah, Tiger Woods. Yeah, absolutely. There's a little bit of facial recognition and facial familiarity with Tiger Woods. Well, he's also tall and fit. I mean, you know, Tiger's a, a fit fella. So glad to see that Tiger. Well, you're gonna... our you're our golf expert <laughs> as part of uh, PGA Tour Radio. What's uh, what's Tiger going to talk about there tomorrow? Well, it's his tournament uh, this week, and you know, certainly there's a lot of questions about his playing future. We have a break here. He's going to come back and play, but not full time anymore, Paul. Well, that's. Anytime Tiger Woods can come back and play, that's something we all want to see. So maybe not quite to the level that it's been before uh, at the competitive level, but just to know that he's going to come back is great and that, uh, that likely to come out tomorrow. So that, uh, that shot did not go for Bruton. And a turnover by the Bulls. And we, we joke that Coach Lewandowski isn't the only one who looks a little like Tiger Woods. He, Adam Scott does a little bit too, and Shafar, Sharon Shafino kind of draining him like Tiger Woods does. <laughs> well, Adam Scott's a better name, at least a golfer, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Short on the three on the other end is Perry, or Curtis Jones, rather, and that goes up and over the backboard, and that possession will go to the Pioneers. You know, the Pioneers have uh, Jag... Sing Jawar in the game now. I'd like to see them go to him. Uh, you know, try to establish him in the post here. That's a nice matchup. I, I think he's got against Skogman. They play him in the high post. He's not going to score from out there. He's more on the block. Here he is posting up there, trying to get it to him. Yeah, that sets the screen. Now rolls off the screen while his teammate Van gets into the lane and dribbles back out and bounce passes it. And that's off his hands and out of bounds. And I think you see some of the signs of the, the rawness of a player right there, well, you it, know, coming from where he came from. Well, that's a tough catch, actually, uh, where that was. It's a, a, a bounce pass in the lane that tight. That's a tough catch for a seven-footer. That's a tough catch sure. for a six-foot-five player. True. So, yeah, you, you've got to, you know, the, the pass was fumbled off the uh, high screen. You've got to feed him into the post there where it's a, a, it's a lob in. Jonathan kind of got caught between dribbles oh. and said, okay, I'll just shoot it. 
That was that was a great shot because that was contested by a seven footer who came out there with, with the reach. 18 for Jonathan, 19 for Josh Mbala. Van has it knocked away by Keyshawn Bruton. And that will go to Buffalo. Good defensive play by Keyshawn Bruton. Well, that's what you like to see. You like to see the hustle. I mean, they're engaged in this game. And both players hustling on both sides. That's some blue-collar points there for Keyshawn Bruton. Of course, the Bulls track all those hustle plays and award uh, the blue-collar award, the blue hard hat to a player after every game. It's kind of been dominated by Josh Mbala early in the year. But that's a tradition that has lived on for years here at Buffalo. Bruton going with the chartreuse uh, shoes there, Paul. Wow, the fact that you knew that that was chartreuse and beyond something that was green is very impressive. Well, he's going to chart two more points there, too. That's impressive, too. Well, Eight points for Keyshawn Bruton. It's a popular jig color for steelhead fishing. That's how I know. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I'll take, give Skogman credit here. He's doing a nice job defending. And that's a seven-footer. Yep, that's Skogman and Hardnett that battled for the rebound. Hardnett with a nice pass to Trayvon Fagan for the layup. That's two power forwards break into each other there with the pass and the catch and layup. Not easy. And there's your bounce pass for the big guy. And off the top of the backboard and in for Jags Sinjoar. He's watching him in the shoot-around. He's got nice touch with that. Uh, you're running one hand to that little jump hook. And, you know, when he's in the game, you, you got to feed him. You got to take advantage uh, of that matchup. And, you know, there's the bounce pass. He's able to handle that one and gets the nice back rim touch there. First two of the game for Singh Jawar, the native of Punjab, India. You know, he's got good feet. He played soccer, uh, you know, as a young kid, Paul. So, you know, there's some athleticism there. And I think that's that's been very common of all the great players like Hakeem Olajuwon that came out of Africa. It was all, it, all their, their quickness in there came from playing soccer, which is clearly the number one sport in a lot of those countries. I, I, to follow up on what I said to you before, there are NBA academies now in India, in Africa, in Latin America, and two of them in China as the NBA attempts to grow the game in those kinds of countries. And we said that's where Singh Jawar's basketball pedigree comes from attending the NBA academy in Delhi. Oh, Keyshawn Bruton's feeling it. That's 11 points for Keyshawn Bruton. Well, that will give Coach Weitzel for a big player. And such a difficult matchup for most of the players in the Mid-American Conference, which is why he has been so good and throwing a little bit of that to create some more space for him. ACL Jack with the three. And yeah, nice two-man game there between uh, he and Bruton. And that was one of those where when Jack passed it, he knew he was getting it back to set himself up for the shot. Ball movement on the perimeter. Now Callaway will drive to the hoop, has it blocked. Knocked away and stolen, and Maceo Jack will get fouled as he tries to move it down court. See, now, with this setup on the floor here, you know, when Singh Juar on the floor, better matchup, I think, anyways. Uh, Skogman, a little uh, taller, and they have the longer arms here, but it's either going to be um, Fagan or Hartnett. Uh, guarding him, and I think that's a matchup with the back to the basket that Singh Jawar can take advantage of with that jump hook. Curtis Jones will trigger for Buffalo. Trying to get it into Maceo Jack, it does. I think they played the two-man game, they do. That one rims out for Maceo, loose ball, regained by the Pioneers into the hands of Jordan Stowe. Bulls is being very aggressive defensively here. Oh, nice feed and no finish there from Walker. But another chance for Point Park. Well, that was great uh, recovery by LaCroix Hartnett. And another one. That's three blocks here in the last two sequences yeah, down the floor. That's a big one for Hartnett. Keyshawn Bruton's been hot. Not that time. 
<laughs> he thought it was going down. He was hooting down the floor defensively. It brings great energy to the floor. Sure does. Nine block shots by the Bulls in this game. Listen, they, they got I got a foul there. They had Jawar posted up against Jack and didn't give him the basketball. Well, again, that's you, you can't miss those opportunities. There you saw it right there before the foul was called. Now it's his zone, but he's big enough there, and if he turns to the basket, then he can pass out of that or take that small jumper. A little over 10 minutes to go in this one. Buffalo well in control on their way to a fourth victory of the season. Paul, we get a chance. I want to talk about Maceo Jack's uh, shoot-around warm-up routine because it was uh, pretty interesting how he did things. And we had turnover here. Now, Maceo Jack, he's coming out right now, but I'll tell you real quick. He came out, and uh, they would feed him the basketball. He'd shoot until he made five straight from about... 18 feet, then he back up in the same spot to the three-point arc until he made five. Just be five in a row, but until he made five, then he moved to the next spot on the Almost floor. Almost like finding his range a little bit. It was, it was finding the rhythm and the range, the distance, but started shorter, then went back. Bruton almost had it stolen. Jamon Bibbins in the ball game can't get that runner to go. Looking for the big guy, Scott, on the low block. Jump hook is too hard. And here come the Bulls on the break. Bruton whips it down low for Hardnett. Top of the key, Fagan. Thought about the three. And this time, Fagan a little closer to the basket. Can't get it to go, but draws the foul. Fagan wanted to take that three, then thought, well, maybe not. <laughs> Not bad three-point shooters. Two of six this year. Hit some big ones last year, too. Well, but it comes into a, a better opportunity for him taking the basket. How about Eddie Floor? He's not afraid to hang in there against the big guys. I like that kid number two. Trayvon Fagan, the sixth-year grad student from Waterloo, Iowa, hits the free throw. What a great story Trayvon Fagan is. Two ACLs that he has had to overcome and continues to be a solid reserve player for the Bulls as he has been his entire career. And, and what an example for his teammates, especially young teammates who may, things might not be going the way they want, may not be getting as many opportunities, uh, dealing with injury, and they can look at him and he can say, hey, and stick with it. The big freshman, Kuel Matting into the ball game. Six foot nine inch freshman out of High Point, North Carolina. Seen some glimpses of him. I know he's a player that the coaching staff really thinks highly of. He's, he's a little raw, and they'll get him to be more consistent. But he's big and with long arms, and he's got a lot of talent. And look at him come out here to play defense and do it well. Oh, yeah, he really did it well. And he triggers the break, and it's an alley-oop for Bruton who puts it in off the glass. Well, nice adjustment. He certainly he wanted to dunk that one for the fans here, but had to adjust as the, the arc wasn't high enough on the pass. Hardnet with the rebound off the Shafino miss. LaQuill going to take it all the way. And nice move there by LaQuill, showing his versatility. New Buffalo career high for Keyshawn Bruton of 13 points. Bulls Shaf as you say. Shafino trying to find some room, couldn't really do it. And that will be yet another. Oh, is that going to stay with Point Park? Yes. I believe it will, yes. The Bulls really keeping the defensive pressure on it. And, and you know, that, that's important again. Uh, he, there's game shape, and you know the players who are uh, into the games and substitutions in. Listen, uh, th this is their chance to to play and and work on the system that they work in practice. Freshman from Rochester, Cottrell Blocker in the ball game number two, Ty Perry, the junior from Boston, in along with Curtis Jones and Jamon Bivens and Kuel Maddox. So 
This is all reserves in the ballgame right now for Buffalo. Guys looking to make an impression here. And Matting able to tip that one into his hands for the rebound. I like how he run the floor. He wanted it, wanted it back there. Blocker into the lane. Gets his own rebound and puts it up and in. That was a nice effort. Staying with it there off the miss. You see what kind of defender blocker is. You gotta be a good one with a name like that. Yes, ball. you do. Here's Bivens. No look pass to his teammate Perry and has it blocked from behind, but Bivens gets the rebound. Blocker for three. No good. And finally, Point Park gets the possession. Now Maddie now was out of position, but went up a little piece of that, tried to tip it back. With this man-to-man -man defense, it's an interesting matchup for Madding because he's got a guard to guard. Now he's shading him a little bit to the paint. That's his man there, zero, his jersey number. Knocked away into the hands of Van, who will throw it up oh. and in. Nate Van, seven points in the ball game. That's the second off-balance uh, layup that he has made. He had one over Jonathan Williams. Uh, earlier in the game. Buffalo in the middle of a 14-2 run right now. And here's Matting, gets the off point as a bull for the freshman Kuel Matting. Bull sticking with that aggressive man-to-man -man defense. Again, these players trying to make the most of their opportunity. Jamon Bivens up for the rebound. To his teammate Jones, Matting will drive the baseline. Kick it back out. A little direction from his teammate Jones. Set him up for the screen. Jones says, I'll shoot from 20 feet. Can't do it, but good save by Jamon Bivens. Jones was actually trying to get Matting uh, an offensive opportunity. And how about the three for Matting? It won't go. But flying in for the rebound, and the foul is control blocker. Well, nice job here by Blocker, off the rebound. Winning a battle there for the basketball and going up strong. And you see the bench uh, behind there at the top of your screen on their feet. Listen, they, they appreciate these players may not get as much playing time because the practice time. These are the players that push them in practice uh, to get better. They put in just as much work as the starters do and the, the guys who get most of the minutes. So it's always good to see those players recognize in their teammates. Three-point play for Cottrell Blocker. Comes to UB from Tennessee Prep, but spent some time in his native Rochester at Bishop at Aquinas and Bishop Kearney High Schools. And there's Matting with the block shot. That's the Bulls' 11th block of the night. Do have a foul, though. It's on Bivens. He was on the floor. And where the foul was, right here, the block. He's calling the block on Bivens. Uh oh, yeah, so it won't count as a block shot. And I think it's because the feet were in the uh, circle. He wasn't out of the circle, Paul. Out of the, uh, excuse me, the half circle. Of course, it's more of an oval. It yes. Your extent, so out of the half oval. Mahali Spanos hits the free throws. Can we call that the hovel then if it's a half yeah, oval? You can go wherever you want. I'm not quite sure where you're going with any of it, so just run with it, Kevin. Well, I'm just, you know, the arc there below, that's put there for offensive right. fouls. Correct. And to be set up outside of that, you'll get the call. If you're inside of that, you won't get the call. It'll be a block. Freshman Curtis Jones to the free throw line. But as you see right here, I mean, if you went all the way around, it's not a perfect circle. Ah, uh, yes, it would be. It's more of a of an oval, right? You, you said that, that. If you had that little compass you had in math class in eighth grade and you did a circle, that wouldn't be it. Stolen back by the Pioneers. All right, that's enough of our geometry lesson <laughs> part of the broadcast. I try to stay as far away from math as possible. Blocker. Hangs, loops it up, and in. Nice night for Cottrell Blocker with seven points. Oh, he can elevate, can he? Yeah, sure yeah. can. Explosive. 
Hey, if a control blocker can uh, follow up Jonathan Williams as a Rochester native, uh, let's get a few more of those guys in here from the Flower City. Well, when you think about that, uh, I mean, this has become a great option for Rochester players uh, to come and play. You know, it used to be Syracuse. Well, That's right. Up. Now they're, they're coming west instead of going east. Yeah, and of course on the women's basketball team here at UB, uh, a great pipeline of Rochester players, DeAsia Fair being uh, the current one. Oh, she's a fantastic player. Love watching her play. Women's basketball in action here on Wednesday against Niagara. Have that game for oh. you as well on ESPN3. The big block by Matting triggers the fast break off the miss. Blocker had it broken up. Yeah. There, there's your info for the women's basketball game on Wednesday night. Nice hustle by Walker. There's Matting just. Yeah, he's 6'9, but he, he plays taller because uh, you know, he's got the arms of a seven footer ball. Ty Perry loses it in the lane. Good point park credit. They're still playing hard. This is Spanos with the miss three. Spanos will try it again, and it rims out. Oh, guys. True. So we can't criticize I Yes, I believe we've lost all ability to criticize. Was it was it unanimous? Yes, from all the coaches. Or uh, what? That's a good question. There's got to be a coach out there with a suit deal well, with the, somebody, the, the right? Interesting, the interesting story about it was the Big East coaches, where Jay Wright is like the fat from going over, yes. is like the fashion plate of all fashion plates when it comes to coaches. He voted to go with the casual route. I've been to the place he gets his suits at in Philly. It's Boys. famous, right? Yes. Excellent uh, haberdashery. So, uh, so yeah, you'll see Jim Weitzel and the rest of his coaching staff in the UB gear casually, uh, pullovers, quarter zips, uh, short sleeve shirts uh, for the rest of the season. Uh, you know what? It, it, the suits and everything look good, but they always seem a little out of place, I think. Really? Yeah, it's a basketball game. Look, look like you're coaching at a basketball game. I'm all for that. You're, you're, well, you're Big East guy, Louis Carnesecca in the sweater. The sweater, yeah. Cool. Well, you don't think about it in the NFL. Guys don't wear suits anymore like Tom Landry did for all those years. And you know, Okay, I think fair it's, point. Fair you know, point we, it's all about the branding, right? <laughs> Jamon Bivens to the free throw line for the Bulls. So the Century 21 blazer is out for the sideline. Here's another thing that's <laughs> out. If they, after that three-pointer that uh, Point Park just hit, uh, no longer do we have the possibility of a fewest points allowed ever by a UB basketball team record. That had been 38. Well, you know, I, I had no doubt they were going to get in the 40s anyways, um, just because the shot opportunities they were taking. And Van, with a nice take, 10 3. I mean, he really takes the ball to the basket and was rewarded with that take. And this will get him in double digits. Yep, and there are no other Point Park players with more than nine points, and there still are none in double digits. And, of course, the Bulls trying to hit the century mark here, Paul. Ty Perry tried there, couldn't do it. Rebounded by Svanos. Freshman Mahali Svanos works it around to his fellow freshman, <laughs> Luke. Cochran who trains the three. He was calling for it. He shoots it farther out than uh, Floor was shooting earlier. That's Cochran's third three of the night. Well, when he made the previous one, he, he said something to, to Coach Lewandowski and then came around the far side. like, give me the ball, give me the ball. Blocker with a jumper, no good. Bulls are coming off a game where they scored 106 points to set a Cancun Challenge tournament record. Looking for triple digits for two games in a row. That's going to be an offensive foul. I, there's a little Lucas adjustment. Soleil. A little adjustment the Bulls made defensively. They had matting, uh, you know, shading, if you will. Cochran wasn't full man-on-man, -man, but he was kind of leaning that way. 
And that'd be tough to shoot over the six uh, six foot nine player with the wingspan that he has. Yeah, Soleil draws that offensive foul on Carrington. Bivens off the back iron, no good. Uh, the Bulls, had, the last few times down, haven't really set up an offensive set ball. They just they've been playing a little driveway ball. Yeah, that's uh, what generally happens in games like this. That's Mahali Spanos with the three. And all of a sudden, they found their range yeah. from beyond the earth. It's an 8-0 run right now for the Point Park Pioneers. And now Coach White wants them to, to run a set here. Walker oh. gets it in. Does it, I think he's got him for an offensive yeah, foul. It's not going to count. Wow, that was fun to watch, though. That was fun to watch. Control Walker is crazy athletic. Maybe a little out of control at times, but crazy athletic. That was a charge. Cochran again. Oh, oh how about that? <laughs> Souvenir for the courtside seats. Kuel Matting with Buffalo's 13th block of the night. That young kid thought it wishes he was in Yankee Stadium. He could have taken that ball home. Wow. You could hear it. That has a good thud to yes, it. Yes, you could. That one's way off by Svanos. Ty Perry, short on the layup. Manning with the rebound. Under a minute to go. And, and Manning there, yeah. stepped on the end line. So it'll be an interesting uh, battle for the Bulls on Saturday. It always is when you go to the Riley Center, no matter how good the Bonnies are, and they are very good this year, regardless of the fact that they dropped out of being 16th in the AP poll. That's a very good team, and it is a very hard place to play. Going to be a good test for the Bulls on Saturday. Well, you, you, you saw Jim Whitesell at halftime, the, the, the conversation he had with him talking about, you know, a non-conference schedule, how difficult it is. You schedule a Michigan in there, uh, you, you know, the Cancun Challenge. And, you know, you play the local schools. Big three there. Lucas Soleil, the walk-on off the bench for three. That has the bench erupting for Soleil. Um, and then, you, you know, you're playing your local schools, the big four, and one of them was ranked in the top 25. Yeah. So that will be a challenge for sure. And this one wasn't much of a challenge for the Bulls here tonight, as expected, against the team in Point Park from NAIA, Buffalo's Division I Bulls. Show them how they do it in the big time. It's a big Buffalo 94.